Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, it's been a rough start to get this going. I just installed a new OS and, and it's been giving me nothing but problems. Um, but I think I think I got it. I, hopefully I'm not too laggy. Here in the screen, I had to do some driver stuff. Anyway, not the point. That's not why we're here. So why we're here uh, is because a couple of days ago, somebody reached out to me on Twitter or X or whatever, um, saying, hey, you should take a look at next term. It does, you know, RDP and VNC and SSH. And I was like, meh, like I don't, it's not that I don't care. I just, it, it didn't, it didn't interest me. I don't have a use for that. Uh, but then I got to thinking about it. And I was like, okay, maybe, maybe. It reminds me a lot, like in my head, I'm thinking it reminds me of, of guacamole, which is a video I made a couple of years ago. I loved guacamole and I was like, okay, let's take a look. And I'm really, really glad I did. And I think you will be too. A couple of things to to get out of the way about uh, about next term first. This is still very much an early development. So, so that's something to keep in mind. Don't put this in pr into production yet. It's not there. It will be just not yet. And we're gonna talk about where it is and where it's headed and some, some roadmap stuff and that kind of thing. Um, but before we get into that, I wanna actually talk about, about that screen. You've probably noticed it flickered a couple of times. I'm still working out some bugs. But a couple of days ago, somebody left a comment saying that that screen was really distracting. And I agree to a certain point. Um, because uh, there was some glare on it, there was some 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 reflections. Just it didn't look good, so I moved it. And then uh, the Raspberry Pi that that is powering it or powering what's on the display uh, was just Raspberry Pi OS on a desktop running VLC with a video. This this is a different setup, um, and you'll notice. Hey, look, there there are my patrons as of uh, September first. I think every couple of weeks I'm going to update that list but it's just a little something extra to say thank you to my patrons. Uh, so if you wanna see your name up there, uh, go become a patron for like a dollar a month. Uh, not only will you get your name up there, but uh, you'll also get early access to my content when it's available <clears throat> and all of the access to, to, my, uh, to my content on Patreon is ad free. That's no YouTube ad, it's no baked in ads, nothing like that. So uh, if you want that stuff, you can get it for like a dollar a month over on Patreon. I have a link in the description, but with that said, let's jump in and take a look at Next Term. Okay, so this this is Next Term's website. It's very simple. It's very to the point, and I really, I actually really appreciate simplicity when it comes to website development. Let just let it be what it needs to be. Don't try to force a bunch of unnecessary garbage into a website. Uh, I think I think uh, Matthias has done a great job with this. Um, so basically, uh, it's just got a little bit of information here. Um, and you can you can jump into the run preview and the GitHub, and that's all there is on here right now. Uh, he, he's working on this, like he's also got a full time job. Uh, so so this this may be a, a little slower, but it's on its way, and I'm really digging it. So uh, next term, uh, server management, the open source server management software for SSH, VNC, and RDP. There's more coming, but that's where it is right now. Uh, if we jump over, if we click GitHub, we're going to come back. But if we if we click GitHub. Again, all of this will be linked in the video description. Uh, you can go look through the code if you wanna do that. So I dig that. Um, but if we come over here and we click on run preview, um, right here, uh, it says, caution, next term is currently in early development and is subject to change. It is not recommended to use it in a production environment. Uh, the reason for that is because as more functionality gets built into this, the database structure may change, which may cause, uh, which may cause things to break during updates. So again, this is, this is very much an early development. This is definitely something that uh, I just wanted to make a video about to, to bring attention to it, to to let people see that there's this new thing that's coming and it's going to be awesome. So, um, but that, that that's all there is on this page. It also says uh, your the warning, your password needs to be at least eight characters long and contain at least one number or one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, one number and one special character. Um, and the current error message might be confusing, but it will be fixed in the future. That's absolutely true. I, I use my, my default uh, username and password combo when I'm doing testing and it didn't work. Um, I had to try a couple of different password things to make it work. And it just kept throwing up an error saying your, your, your username and your password is wrong or something. 
We'll cover that later, but just be aware that that is a thing. But yeah, there's, and that's it. Like it's, it's, it's a couple of messages and then some Docker stuff. So before we get into to, to installing it, uh, let's actually take a look at my setup so that you can get an idea of what we're talking about before we get into the setup, right? So we'll go ahead and jump over to um, the tab with my setup in it. I'm already logged into this. We'll talk about logging in and that sort of thing when we set this up. But here we can see uh, kind of top left, they've got their, their logo mark, uh, the search up here, which is great. Uh, like it just filters in real time. Uh, love that, really well done on that. Or you can do uh, apparently control S. Oh, if you're not there, it will automatically jump over to there. So that that's awesome. Uh, here under that, we can see I've got folders for SSH and RDP. I don't have anything really set up for uh, VNC, so I don't have that here. Uh, I'm sure it's the exact same process that we'll take a look at here in a bit. Um, so that's what's going on here that's very straightforward. I wanna jump into the settings real quick before we jump into the actual demo of how this works. Uh, so we come over to settings, we've got our account with our name, two-factor authentication built in very early on, absolutely love that. Uh, we can change our password right here very easily. And then sessions, we can see all of the different sessions that uh, that I've connected with. And then uh, the, the one at the, the one that says log out, that is your current session, like it says right there. And of course you can revoke any other session that might have been connected, is connected, whatever, um, just by clicking revoke. And I love that that was something that was put into development or into place very, very early on for a security thing. I think that's absolutely wonderful. Um, but with that said, let's jump over here and take a look uh, at some of our stuff here. Uh, we can we can we can open and close these folders, which I think is great. Just anywhere over here, you can create a new folder uh, very very simply. Um, so if we come over to here, if we click on say prox demo, a simple left click doesn't do any. Oh, if you double click it, it does. I didn't. I, that's something I just realized that neat. So from here, you know, you can just do uh, apt update just like that, and just just like you had a terminal window open on your screen, but now it's here, and I think this is wonderful. Uh, studio, that's the computer I'm on right now, so I'm not gonna mess with that. Uh, living room, or living room, um, I've spent the last 20 minutes trying to figure that out. Um, there's something up with that system, um, because I can remote into this system from that system via via uh, next term with no issues, but going the other way is weird. It's that system. so. To help me prove that point to myself, um, uh, I, I set up remote desktop on my laptop, and here, here we go. So now, now I am remoted into my laptop uh, via via next or via next term, uh, and it's just it's just that easy. Um, now, one thing I, I will note here. Um, Let's say you've got a couple of sessions open like Prox Demo and Laptop, and you can jump back and forth between them just by clicking the tabs across the top. There's also this little uh, icon right here. Uh, I don't know what that does because it says it's not implemented yet. But uh, if you click back over to say settings, right? You wanna look at something, you wanna change something, whatever your reason happens to be. If you come back over here to your servers, it kicks you out of the sessions you just had open. I'm sure that will get fixed later on. Just know that that is a thing. Also, uh, a couple of things. One, I would I would like to see the ability to move uh, to move uh, some of this stuff around a little bit. Um, like you can't drag and drop anything. You can't change the order of anything once it's in place. Um, and then the same thing here, like let's say, let's say I wanted to move laptop down. I can't click and drag it. If I open this up, uh, if I right click and say it's like edit, there's nothing in here that lets me change where it uh, where it is uh, over here in my tree. Again, I'm sure that will get addressed later. It's just not there yet. So just a couple of little things that I've noticed. If you leave this page, any active sessions you've got will close and you can't change the order of anything yet. I'm sure again, all of that will get changed later. So, um, but yeah, no, you can just, oops, you can just double click. I, again, I just learned this right here in this video, and I think that's great. Again, laptop, uh, we'll give that a second because it is it is Windows after all. Um, and there we go. Now we're getting logged in. So, uh, so just having the ability to do that again. There is VNC stuff that you can do as well. However, I don't have I don't have any anything set up with that at this point. Um, 
But I tell you what, at this point, let's actually take a look at what it takes to get this installed. It is bonkers easy to do. And then uh, then we'll take a look at some of the roadmap stuff and the email that, uh, that Matthew has sent to me uh, with regards to some of the things uh, that he's got planned and then also how you can uh, how you can follow along with that on your own. So uh, what we're going to do is come back over here to the home page uh, and, and it's just it's just this right it's just the this one this one little docker compose the service is next term they've got the ports set at 6989 restart always uh, which I think is good I might for my own sake set that to unless stopped uh, just because if it's set to restart always even if you shut it down and then reboot your server or something if you've if you've taken the time to shut it down, you may not want it to come back up automatically if a server reboots or something like that. So I might switch the restart policy to unless it stopped, but that is a, is a decision you can make for yourself. Uh, the volumes, it's just a Docker volume and then it's just next term and then it's mapped to where it needs to be in the app. That is also declared down here as well. And then the image is um, German Newsmaker slash next term uh, with the tag of latest. It's really just that simple. So what I'm gonna do is copy that. I'm gonna jump over to Portainer and create a new stack. I've already got it installed here, so this is going to deploy quickly, but we're gonna change a couple of things just for the sake of, 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 of showing how it works. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna change the volume here to that. And then we're gonna do just 6969. Um, and then we're gonna call it, uh, we're gonna give it a name of um, uh, Next Term Tut. So just like that, we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna click deploy. Yes, you can do this in command line. If you know how to do it in command line, you can extrapolate what we just did to that, I promise. So uh, what we can do now is click on Next Term Tut. And then right over here, we've got our ports. So I'll just click that. And now it wants me to register an account. It just popped up that quickly and easily. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna do DB uh, tech. Uh, something I noticed, um, oops, um, 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 we're gonna do DB tech. And then, right, that I just put in my, my, my default username and password for all of this tutorial stuff. And if I click register, oh, it worked that time. Last time it didn't let me do that. So your mileage may vary when you're creating your account. Um, just know that you may have to change a couple of things to get it to work. Again, that he, he's aware of that, he's working on that. It's in the notes. So again, from here, uh, you've got your, your account, your sessions, uh, just adding two-factor authentication, there you go. Um, you can add two-factor authentication that way. Um, and then if we come over to sessions, uh, let's, let's, let's add a new folder. Yeah, you have to start with a folder. Uh, we're gonna call this tut. And then, oops, then we're gonna do uh, create a server. Uh, the server name is gonna be uh, prox demo. And then, right, like so, like so. You can also do uh, key files if you wanna do that. I'm just gonna do a very standard username and password for the sake of simplicity right here. Click create and then double click. And just that quickly, we've set up our server and we're logged in to a Proxmox or a PVE server, Proxmox Virtual Environment Server, uh, just that quickly and easily. So let's do one more, uh, just real quick here. Uh, we're gonna create a server, uh, laptop uh, 2.168.119. Uh, we're gonna switch this. Again, there's RDP and VNC over here. Uh, we can change this if we wanna do that. Um, and then we'll do identities and create. Laptop, make sure I didn't fat finger anything, and there we go. Now we're remoted in to my laptop, just that quickly and easily. And again, just to make sure that we're, we're all on the same page here, right? Like, it really is connected to a different computer in the other part of my house. And that's that's genuinely how easy it is to get next term set up via Docker. Again, keep in mind, this is not production ready. This is just me showing you what is coming. Uh, if you want to help support and show your enthusiasm for this, jump over to, um, to their GitHub repository. Again, links to everything in the video description uh, and give them a star. It's already got 376. Let's get that number way up. I would love to see that number go way, way up. Um, 
The other thing that I wanna talk about just real quick before we end this video is some of the stuff that's coming down the pipeline. Uh, so let me pop up my email where we'll take a look at the email that he sent me and then we'll take a look at some of the other stuff that's coming. Okay, so this is the email that uh, the, that uh, Matthias sent me, or Matthias, I'm sure. I'm sure I've screwed that name up a dozen times during this video and I apologize. Um, so if you ever wanna get a full list of the changes planned for the project, I would suggest you check out the GitHub issues of the project. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Uh, but here's a quick list of features that I originally planned when I started the project, which is AI integration with either OpenAI or Olama API, um, and it, for like things like code gener or snippet generation, uh, command line auto completion, little things like that would be amazing. Um, command snippets, so uh, kind of like what Termius snippets has, if you're familiar with that, where you can just kind of have a list of snippets that you use and then just deploy them right from next term. I think that would be great. An app store, I have I have mixed feelings on an app store, but not my project, I'm just sharing what's going on here. Docker integration to list manage and update Docker uh, containers from the UI without any software other than Docker being used. Um, so yeah, I would use Docker CLI to do that. SFTP, SFTP support, community scripts, that would be amazing. And Proxmox integration. Uh, this is stuff that he, he said he had planned from the very beginning, but if we jump over here to the GitHub issues, there are 36 issues open uh, with different things that the developer has, has said, look, this is stuff I want to work on, so I'm creating an issue for it myself. Uh, reorder the list of servers, for instance. Um, uh, this is actually by somebody else, but uh, yeah, this is something that I agree with. Light mode, I don't care about, but, uh, but that is me. Uh, opened two days ago, let's come down here. Um, Standalone app using Electron. Uh, so all kinds of cool stuff in here. If you want, oh yeah, SFTP support, server monitoring, session hibernation, Docker implementation, all kinds of really, really good stuff in here that uh, the, the developer himself put in as an issue. So there's maybe some accountability or, or saying, hey, look, I know that we're gonna want this, so I'm putting it up here so that you don't have to, so that I know I'm aware of it already. I think that's great. Um, but that is next term. Again, links to everything will be in the video description. Uh, I'm really, really excited about this project. I think it's going to make a great alternative to some other services that are out there that do similar stuff. Um, so uh, keep an eye out for this, keep an eye on this. Go go give it a star, go follow it on GitHub. I think this has got a lot of potential and I would love to see this grow and get blown up. In fact, it's up to 377 stars since, since we got into this section of the video. So people are actively watching this. And again, if you take a look, um, this, was, this was updated as recently as an hour ago. So this is active development. Um, so yeah, go go support this project. I'm really excited about it. I think you will be too. That's really all I wanted to cover in this video. Just, I'm so excited. I don't know how to wrap up this video other than go support it. If you wanna support me and get your name on the screen back there, head over to Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You can get your name there. Early access, ad-free access, all of that. Um, so yeah, I think with all of that said, if you like this video, do me a favor and like, subscribe, that all that stuff. Um, yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up and I will talk to you guys in the next video.